Good afternoon, morning, or evening, Mech Warriors. Uh, I am back again, and we are back again. There are more games to go, and we're going to get the next set underway. Uh, it is 228 versus DPS, and I have Mr. One Last Buy with me this time around. How you doing, mate? Yes, hello. I'm back again after a week. Only get to cast one match today, but... Yeah, that's you know, right. Playing this morning, well, playing this afternoon, in the morning, whatever, and now, uh, now you're not, so we're up and running. <laughs> yeah, busy day. All Very right. Busy. Um, are we going? Are we going straight into the bands? I mean, we got both the teams yeah. in the in the lobby. Straight oh, into there, the, there we go. I see. Yeah, straight into the bands and two to eight. Uh, wild ones have already banned HPG already, so they're all wow. right, they're right up the up the front, ready to go. Okay. That's that makes what, it easy. Oh yeah, because this is still best of three. Yeah, I, even I'm forgetting that there's still a mixture of best of three, best of five. So uh, I wasn't sure either yeah. what was <laughs> best of four should, or three, <laughs> two, start one. With that disclaimer. So <laughs> for anybody tuning in, yeah, um, today there's been matches played of different, either part of the winners bracket or losers. So we're, I think it's what first round of the losers bracket is being played today. Yep. And it was like the second, no, third round of the winners. So, third, uh, yeah, I think third round. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So the matches that were in the winner's bracket were best of five. This is one of the matches in the first thing of the loser's bracket. Yep. It's best of three. And the loser of this match will be eliminated since this will be their second loss. So obviously a lot on the line for both teams here, at least as far as this tournament's concerned. And uh, oh, we yeah. actually get to see bands. We're not just going to see all five maps <laughs> get picked in some order like the best mm -hmm. of fives. That's correct. So, all right. Well, um, see what TPS goes for. I'm trying to remember what these these teams banned last time they played. Um, I don't know. Well, we saw two two eight went to Tourmaline and uh, ooh. they went to Tourmaline Canyon, uh, right? Canyon yeah. and. What was the other one they played GGX on? Um, was it? Mm, it was mining. Yes. Uh, and then there I know they go. played polar. They played polar before that, so I guess they just anything but HPG is their thoughts. Which makes sense. I mean, it, you know, with with this format where you can only get one ban, you need to be able to play all four of the maps because you have no idea what your opponent's gonna pick. Yep. Well, one's down DPS, polar. There we go. Don't want to play polar. So, uh, also as a reminder for anybody, uh, after these first two bands, both teams will get to pick a map, and the last map will have random sides allocated. But when you pick a map, you cannot pick the side you get on that map. Your opponent gets to pick. So, probably only see these teams pick the uh, maps that they don't care about side on. <laughs> I feel like it's going to be Canyon. Yeah, I'd say probably Canyon first. Well, Canyon or Mining, I think. I feel like Mining Team 2 is so strong, though. True. But, but some I mean, teams have set strats for that Team 2 side, I've noticed. I mean, whether it be, yeah. be good or bad, you know, somewhat irrelevant. <laughs> yeah. I know uh, when we saw the Wild Ones play um, last weekend, they were very aggressive and very, yep. very much building decks that were meant to push forward. And I think on Mining, they could definitely do that from either side. Certainly in case on Canyon. They're and, very uh, aggressive. It was good to see. Um, I think they gave oh, JGX yeah. a very good run for their money last week in the matches. Oh, Tom Line. Okay. Okay. Right. That's it. Okay. I don't think what they did last week is going to work a second time. Uh, now that somebody knows it's coming. I mean, I, 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 they did take a drop off JGX with that push, but I think that was also them getting kind of fortunate they caught out a Warhawk with it. So, yeah. Yeah, a little bit out of uh, the other team, out of the out, slightly out of position. Not a lot, just just a little bit. Mm. So we'll see what DPS goes with. I they're taking their I sweet think time, with that's for sure. I like think from what I of... have experienced fighting against them and what I know about them, I think they're going to go mining. But ah, maybe they won't though, because that map does favor push decks, so. I not really favor, but it, they're they're very viable. So I don't know. I mean, they're certainly thinking hard about their bands. <laughs> they are thinking very long and hard about the bands. Or they're thinking hard about something that's causing them not to pick a map. <laughs> yeah. Um, Five minutes already. We've got 
far as one map selected, that's good. Yeah. So, it'll be interesting to see what maps get played here. Um, I don't know, what, what, were, what was being played earlier in the day? Because I, I didn't tune into those um, matches. It was, uh, the ones that I, well, ones I was casting and ones I watched briefly, it was all over the place. There's not, there hasn't been a set, uh, you know, this is it. Like, it, it's just these three maps mm. or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, I think in previous years we definitely saw um, with those map pools that people would like always ban polar and it would just be canyon and tourmaline every single drop in mining collective. <laughs> yeah, so it's definitely not like that. Uh, not at all. There's been a bit of polar, uh, a little bit of HPG. Um, mining seems to be pretty popular at the moment. Probably, probably oh, the yeah. most popular. I think it's the comfort zone for teams because it's the one that hasn't changed, but it looks like it'll be. The map that gets random sided here. Canyon and then mining for the decider. Let's see who gets the side pick here. Wow, DPS. Okay, okay, never mind. They're, I forgot they have to pick teams on the first map first. So DPS taking team one on Tourmaline, I think is the stronger side. I think most people think that is. Um, Get that nice uh, ledge that overwatches the center of the map, overwatching the theta cap, which gives you pretty easy control. You can also spawn a little closer. We'll see what DPS takes. I, I believe the favorite side on Canyon is the top spawn. I don't know if that's true still. I don't know. It's like it used to be. I haven't seen enough comp matches on it since the changes, well, all of the changes, to really sort of say, okay, this is generally the more favored or not. I mean, it seems to be teams doing pretty mm -hmm. well from both sides, actually. Again, it depends yeah. on the strat you bring in. Oh, right. Yeah, and it looks like, uh, based on the log here, Wild Ones did get the random choice of side for Mining Collective, and they've gone with Team 2. Not really surprised there. I think that's the, again, most people's preferred side on that map. But uh, Well, we're up yeah. to Team one, uh, Sorry, the map strategy. So we've got what, Team 1 uh, is uh, DPS. Hey, we've had a beautiful drawing on here already. Uh, oh, yeah, that's from <laughs> earlier. Oops. Where are we going? It's a uh, tourmaline to start. Uh, no. yes, that is correct, mate. That is correct. All right. Um, yeah. I mean, I don't. We we cast the uh, tourmaline versus JGX. No, I guess we did cast the. I was about to say I haven't cast much, but we. I mean, we did cast it like once per per set because uh, people again seem to be pretty comfortable with this map too. Um, I think DPS. Uh, I think. Last week, they played this sort of um, small wolf pack with a, like a control overwatch type thing and ended up running up against CXF, who played a very similar <laughs> deck and uh, ended up just being a little more successful with it. So yep, I think, definitely. given that, that they are probably going to be putting some mechs up in uh, the Echo 4 area, maybe some stuff out by stage, probably go for the early Theta Cap. And then we'll have to see whether or not they want to go for Sigma or for Gamma. And I mean, it's basically the same question for the Wild Ones, right? Except they don't get the luxury of really getting that easy Theta cap, so. Mm, yeah, the, yeah, Theta definitely team one slight, slight advantage. Um, yeah, it's going to be interesting. I'm not, I mean, we saw, uh, I had my team go like around the sort of E7, D7 and lose a couple of salts, but pick off some lights and the, the game completely flip flopped earlier today. Like it mm. strange. It's <laughs> normal line now is strange. It, it plays out in all sorts of different ways, actually. Oh, wow. And, uh, looks like DPS is ready and they've been, they haven't even locked yet. Technically. Yeah. That's what I've got to ask them. As you guys will see from the lobby here, uh, you will see how the teams are arranged. 228, just Alpha Bravo, no uh, no care in the world. And Alpha Bravo and Charlie for DPS. Yeah, and I, I believe when we watched uh, 228 last time, they pretty much didn't care about changing their deck at all. I think they all made like a total of two mech changes across the entire series. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, I'm interested to see, I mean, are they just going to take the same thing where they just sprint it up from Kappa and go through, uh, the Stargate Fox 5 area, or are they, um, going to do something more, I don't know, varied, different, I guess is the word I'm looking for. 
Uh, perhaps, perhaps. We're just waiting for DPS to let us know that they've locked. Uh, I don't even know how the map band works, so probably don't even know about that. Yep, oh no, there we go. Ones no, I'm wrong. Prompt as always. <laughs> locked and ready. No mucking around. Let's get straight into the match. All right. Oh man, it's so cold. Oh, yeah, it's actually it's cold. Here, be an mate. exciting match. It's nearly summer here, and it's cold. Be good. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna see. Do they still have dropships on this map. Yeah, that's why I don't touch anything. Gotta wait. Yeah, that's right. I have to be patient on Tormaline yeah. line now and Tola too. It. All right, let me uh, start checking around. What's so on Wild Ones has Mislinks, Firestarter, Phoenix Hawk, Black Lantern, and then uh, Warhammer, Stalker, Death Strike, and Timberwolf. So basically the same deck they took last time, although variants look a little different. I'll have to check the builds when they get in here. Over on the DPS side, it looks like oh, they're loading in now. A Phoenix Hawk, a Firestarter Viper and Black Lantern, and what else yep. is that? Executioner, Battlemaster, and Direwolf. So, yeah, the Timberwolf on the 228 side is that quad LPL that we saw again. Kind of a weird build, in my opinion. Yeah, very uh, weird. I would agree. Death Strike is the uh, two large, four medium, two Goss, sort of laser bomb. Or Hammer 60, large. laser bomb. And... Eight allies die wolf, dude. Oh, wow. Okay. And Jay has the kind of standard Stalker 7D with three large, six ER medium. Okay, so Matt, I've seen people taking this ER large dire wolf. I I don't know, man. I don't know. This might be using. Does the Prime have Omni quirks in those arms? It gives duration or something. But it's all torsos for him, so interesting. Battlemaster is also ER large there, and the Executioner is quad ER PPC. That's another build that I think is kind of weird. Okay. But anyway. Well, look at this, yeah, right? 228 comes least. straight up. They're not mucking wow. around at all. Yeah, but so DPS are going all the way a, around. They had the timing advantage to the cap, but they did not invest in into it. They said they've sent their lights around to this bottom area towards Sigma up into the spires. So that's going to give them Sigma cap, but. Yeah, the four large pulse stars. Timberwolf is back. It is back. That's what I'm saying. I, I think it's wild. So, yeah, Wild One's sending their heavy pack up towards the spire in the bottom of the map. Um, okay, so I DPS, don't know if it was scouted by DPS. Uh, DPS have just completely given up all hope of Theta. Uh, this is strange. yeah. Oh, I'm going to say this is very strange. I mean, their, their pack has gone all the way out the way to Sigma here. DPS are really so, kind of... I think Hydro Kyle has seen that, that 228th pack down low. Yeah. Hopping into his cockpit. They know the lights are there. I, yeah, I'm pretty sure he knows 228th is right around the corner. He has to. This time... Unlike in the JGX case, yeah, the DPS back. hasn't pushed DPS an assault out, back. so I yep. I don't know what 228 is going to push for if they try to push here. They're just going to be stuck in a crossfire, so... They are definitely bunching up like they want to push, though. They are not going for that gamma cap. They don't care about a 3 cap. They well, are I mean, just going to All they have to do is go, go to the left, it. right? And they've completely invalidated yep. Juice and Cybot. If they just go to the left and hug the wall, they completely invalidate. And it looks like that's going to be the thing happen. right here. Yep. These, these DPS assaults need to step forward right and now. the commando for DPS is just in the middle of bloody nowhere. Like, he's not even in the fight, the commando. What's he doing over there? <clears throat> the DPS are going to lose this straight up. Yeah, they, they, their Black Lantern looks like he's getting away, but they just immediately lose a Viper for basically nothing. nothing. And actually, no. I mean, Jay-Z and Drax Steve, are taking yeah. a little bit of damage, but, I mean, it's not a lot. Good pants here is... Yeah, look at this. I mean, DPS just... They know this push is coming, and they're in the completely wrong position to receive this. Oh dear. And now Bad. T2X is just going to hug the wall and walk right back up the hill yep. just like they did in the JGX match. So. Yeah, yep. all right. Sidebot and Juice are just we'll see if... not in the range. Look, the Sidebot's going to come around the corner here. All right? Watch this. When the push comes, he's just going to get eviscerated. And yeah, looking at these ranges now from Nature's Cockpit, that's about 500 and change, which is getting into that laser bomb optimal that 228 has right now. So yep. if 228 just W keys around this corner, they absolutely have the firepower. I'm surprised they haven't. I uh, mean, they just put mechs down. Yeah. They're two up already, right? What, what, what are they going to wait for? Just do it. And it looks like uh, Jay has called the move forward. You see all the heavies going through. Saiso in the back trying to attract the lights off. He's got three lights out, but. Oh, well, two or three of the 228 guys backing up here. This down. is not good. They, 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 you either go or you, you don't, right? Like, you can't half stop like this. Yeah, they, they certainly have the armor and the Oh, the maybe they're getting rid of the fire starter it, but... over here first. Yeah, sausage, yeah. Okay. All right, that's another yeah, mech down for DPS. Not going well. Yeah, at this point, it's whenever 228 feels like pushing that corner. Oh, Nature's Nature almost CT. Open. I didn't yeah. realize Nature's CT done as well. It's one too. touch. Oh, dear. 
I mean, two to eight are going to lose a back or two, right? That's that, that. At this point, it's unavoidable, right? You're going to lose one or two. Who cares? Just get in there and end it. Yeah. And this direwolf, if he wants to actually shoot, has to look at the enemy the entire time. Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> now he's in trouble. Three separate year large burns. Okay, here we go. They're One's going to go Phoenix down. Here's going to go like, down. But... I think. Uh, but they yep. uh, get juice firstly. Cyber goes down, and now there's just not much left. Wow. I just TPX max by the middle. Yep. Yeah. Strange I, game. I mean, oh, this is a strange game. This one. <laughs> this is really weird. Yeah. Game. I mean that the. the the spread would have been okay, but they needed to be farther. I don't know. I feel like their assaults were playing too much defensive. It's hugging that wall, right? If if you do yeah. get pushed over, you can cross there completely free. You cannot be hugging the mm -hmm. uh, the exterior wall. You have to be right on DSJ yeah. Hill, right in the middle of it, ready to shoot anything that comes over that ramp. Yeah. Four wide. I mean, they, they need to be more like where uh, Stoney is standing here, the, yep. the Mad Cat right yep. now. Yep. Like, I, I mean, that was a fine split, even if their lights were over there. But they needed to actually give those assaults time to put out damage, and instead, I mean, Wild One just over, right? said, "Okay, we'll take one shot Got Mech standing from up your assaults, here, and then just right? kill everything." You you can't really shoot much as soon as they go over to the right, whereas if you're standing here, you can shoot the entire time they cross over, or at least leg something, CT it, anything, right? But yeah, yeah, weird. So, yeah, I I mean, also Oof, I strong I opening from two two eight here. Wowee. Yeah, I mean, they did one it mech again, down and. I did Almost it again. nothing hurt. Yeah. I guess I, a couple backs hurt there. Black Lantern and uh, the Stalker are both very weak. But yeah, I mean, they just said, you know what? We're going to do the same thing we did before, and that's fine. Yep, that's <laughs> fine. It if it worked it. against JGX, it's going to work against everybody else. Maybe that's the theory coming in here. And damage numbers. Ooh. Oh, dear. Okay, so yeah, looking at the... Um, popping in the map code there. I mean, it wasn't that disparate from the, the heavier mechs i mean dps's heavy mechs did have the ability to put out some damage but the story is that their other five mechs very clearly couldn't do anything they just got <laughs> yeah just completely cut off i mean i guess the whole point of was maybe put the lights and mediums there to, to roll in the back of the push but you're just going to get isolated by the 228 lights in the push anyway so yeah, you can't really I mean, get away they definitely if they were going to do that they needed to be more conservative and kind of force 228 like wait for 228 to push past them and then go or try to sit back and bait 228's lights into an even fight even then i don't know if i like uh the separation they had in that deck those lights were completely cut off from their assaults yep and cut off by the one position they had already seen 228 push but they knew they were coming map, from so. well i mean there's no yeah. there was no mistake or confusion they were coming that way right yeah yeah and they even scouted that i think they had enough time that they could have cut back across even if they took like a burn or something to just get close to their assaults and go towards theta i i don't know why they they really just wanted to give that away but yeah well if they went to uh, theta they would we'll have seen see. a lot easier what was going on too but just swapping yeah. these guys around if you want to do some uh quick drawing yeah so uh oh uh, we saw dps spawn a bunch of lights i think they spawned them i don't actually know where they spawned them but immediately shove around towards sigma with uh four man pack i believe Meanwhile, they set their two yep. assaults up on the left side of that uh, Echo 4 region, Echo 3, and then the, the execution of Pop-Tart and Echo 4, and then sent the Commando all by its lonesome to go take Theta. Of course, 228 then sent four mechs right over there and said, no, that's ours. <laughs> <And> Get away! <laughs> DPS Get away! didn't really have anything they could do about that. And uh, meanwhile, just piloted their heavies over here, you know, grouped up with their team. DPS brought their lights out into here for some reason uh and then 228 just said okay and just ran over here and killed him and this this wall just basically neither of those two assaults on the left of it could do anything to help and i mean even the executioner with ppcs you you're gonna be landing shots maybe but you're probably not gonna have the choice of like i want to hit exactly that leg or yeah. exactly that torso on a light not from that distance yeah, so um I'm not. I'm not sure what DPS. Uh, I think I kind of know what they were trying to do there, but it um, it probably wasn't going to work that well. Yeah, I mean, it really seemed like they were looking for a pick and then wanted to like pull the guys out into the open there, chasing their light pack, and then have their whole team on it. But yep. yeah, if that was their plan, those assaults need to step up. And I would have even said maybe take like a mauler or something with higher DPS. Hmm. Yep. Definitely. Because uh, I the ER larges just did not seem necessary. <laughs>
We have swapped so, something yeah, out I'm just a... for a big fat Annie or anything, right? Anything with just big AC2 mm -hmm. non-stop DPS. Just you. Just send bullets. Send all of them. Yep. So yeah, I don't know. We'll see what they do on Canyon. Um, if they do something similar. I, I think that that disconnect between their their heavies and assaults, if they can just tighten that gap, it'll be a lot better for them. Well, speaking but, of Canyon, uh, let's start drawing on that one, mate. Friggin'. I mean, I'm barely going to have time by the rate know, that these guys I know, are I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave it on the map, uh, the map strat for yeah, like so a minute, even if we load it. readied up uh, all Bravo, some Alpha, some Charlie, you know, which again, to me, looks like this sort of aggressive push. I think that's what we're going to see from them. They, they've been mostly playing on this uh, right-handed side of Canyon in the matches that we saw. Um, just keeping that same deck, basically, of like mid-range firepower with some brawler lights going down the side. And from DPS, um, I don't know, the, the usual power positions are somewhere like that Charlie 4 rock, this rock up front in Charlie 5, you see somebody in Junkyard usually, maybe a supporting guy back down the ledge. And then probably the rest of the mechs are going to be a floating light pack like we have seen. A lot oh, of people think? think this 3 or 4 man oh. pack. Oh, definitely. Definitely. <laughs> but I don't know, I think the thing that they need to be very careful about is if 228 is going to just group up and push, uh, it, it is possible they can go Kappa, but I feel like that push is going to come down this Epsilon direction with mid-range, and DPS needs to be very careful that something playing up in this forward position doesn't just get picked immediately. Yeah, the Charlie so that'll five, be the yeah, prime the suspect. <laughs> oh, yes. That guy's going to be prime suspect, and then this guy sitting in Junkyard is going to be the next one to go. Well, what you can do, you can also move you guys up pretty pretty well to Theta as well um, in, their, in their light pack, yeah. and, and just keep them off Theta as long as they can, too. Just keep DPS busy, really. Yeah, and I uh, I want to say 228 committed some firepower to Theta last time they played this match, so I wouldn't be surprised if they go for that initial cap to just put it on the board for them and then try to make a push after that, but we'll yep. see uh, if that kind of impacts what um, DPS wants to do, because obviously they can't just sit completely in the back and just give away caps. No, that's, that's well, I mean, that's part of the issue. You can't. You have to yep. get up there. You have to. <laughs> on this one, you yeah. cannot. Especially if you lose Theta. If you don't lose Theta, well, it's a little bit different, or you can at least stop the enemy from getting it. Again, a bit different, but... Mm. Two to eight were fast to lock in, too. So they're, they're the old yep. man with the plan. They're coming in I ready to go yeah. again. I mean, when you play the same eight mechs, you know? <laughs> <laughs> can't, be, can't be that hard. Uh, yeah. Is it fair to say there hasn't been a lot of mech lab ingenuity, but I guess it hasn't been needed. They're, they're, they're yeah, I mean, pretty easily and convincingly most of the time. Yeah, I think it's something to be said there where, you know, even when they played, they played JGX, obviously the favorites to win. And with mechs, I would say subpar, but I guess, you know, you look at their execution and it looks very well, like, coordinated. They, their team is playing together. You're not really seeing people go off by their lonesome and die or, like, the sort of dis like you know discoordination well, and, match. and mayhem in their team but perfect example like yeah you know, that was true two to eight didn't overextend it could have made a little bit a uh, little bit of a much well not a little bit a much tougher game um against jgx but jgx for sure yeah it went a little bit a little bit deep a little bit too early yeah maybe they've like learned from that maybe we'll see some of that today overzealous. Mm. i mean we saw that on their mining match too right where their yeah, light pack yeah. pushed around the corner so but i mean when they've been able to keep it reined in it's when they, yeah, when, them, they, so. when they keep keep it organized, and we saw a lot of, I think it was almost maybe too much organization on that last tourma line map. Everyone was waiting for nearly a minute to go around that corner, you know. Oh yeah, hurry up and get so, around there. All right, I am on the. Oh, I'm going to speed over to two because they're going to be easy. Let's see, Black Lantern, <laughs> Phoenix Hawk, Mislinx, Timberwolf, Death. I'm pretty sure this is the exact same deck. Yeah, nothing's changed. Nothing's changed Firestarter, over there again, right? Firestarters, SPLs. I don't know if I said that before. Uh, and yeah, yeah, I think so. Laser bomb. Oh wait, oh it's the ninety now. That's the jumping warhammer, I believe. I think he stole laser bomb though. Oh, a bunch of medium pulse lasers. So they, it's very rocking like the super fast warhammer. Yeah, it looks like a hundred something kph. Yeah, okay, so uh, a DPS side. Yeah. Mislings, Phoenix Hawk, Viper, Black Lantern, Firestarter. I think Luke that's and is. only three ER large on the death strike. I think it's missing a laser. Yeah, I, people run that for heat efficiency, but yeah, I, I agree. <laughs> I think you run the four. Yeah, but. Nevertheless, the Blood Asp is what I want to see. What's this thing have? Triple UAC 5, one oh, UAC 10, on. and an this, ECM. Okay. Are they just going head on at each other here? Oh, not, not quite. And not quite. oh, the Dire Wolf has swapped its uh, six, eight AC2s now yeah. instead of eight year large. 
But here doesn't want to come around this corner, though. I mean, there's a, there's a bit of a party waiting for him. Uh, yeah, I, I he's gonna want to get out of here really, really him, quickly. Yeah, I don't know if DPS realized how, if I mean, vulnerable he is. But here is retreating, so it's okay. Two two eight actually going for a pretty measured start to this out. match. They got yeah. Theta. They're chilling out. They're they're getting cap. I guess they're scouting the left side to see if DPS is pushing. But DPS is balling up in the Epsilon side right now. The problem is with DPS where they're going and with the deck that they have. They've got two ranged mechs, right? Long range. Uh, I mean, and a DAC of Blood Asp as well, but... Uh, it looks like they're they're making this push down Epsilon. They they are... Well, the Dolph yeah, is going to be out of range. Goes... I mean, Dolph's not going to be able to do anything in a second, right? Yeah. He's, uh... I don't think he's set up. He does not have the lines on anything there. He's too low. If he hopped up on some of those pillars, maybe. But yeah, he's basically oh, out of this fight entirely. Oh, I stuck here on the, on the buildings here. They're but meanwhile, they're... Jay-Z still has to close in from, from the center for 228. So this there could go either way right CT, now. There is though. Stoney just tries... He's desperately trying to stay alive here. Running away. Running as if he's yeah, lost Death strike one touch right now in the center. Oh, it does. And now it's just a... It's all in a brawl. Fight. It's a yeah, 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 it's, it's just an all in brawl now. I'm watching... I've done a... The Dire Wolf is finally coming into play for DPS. I'm just trying to watch here, Stony so, here in the in the Death Strike. He's trying to stay alive here. Could use some help from his teammates on the bottom left, but uh, they're not. And then oh, the Viper is legged. Yes, he is. He's, he's legged. Get this is a big one. Here. And Stony, they're all trying to kill off uh, Stony here, but they're not quite finishing him off. Uh, Hydro goes down, double legs. Natrid's open on the CT. Oh dear. This is not looking good for DPS. These are two mega fast games. Uh, good pants in the uh, Black Runner here. It's been annihilated as well. Uh, we've got Cybot and Juice pumping out some damage, but I don't think it's going to be enough here because their mechs are just falling. Natrid goes down as well. We've got Thelus and Sausage uh, in the back here, but I'm not sure they're going to cause too much of a problem. Uh, because, yeah, there we go. Fire starter is legged as well. Now we've got a miss things running around here. And yeah, it looks like Drax and the Black Lantern are just, just yep. basically waiting for his team to finish up he wants the rest to stay of the alive. fight before they, they clean up that dire wolf. Yep. Watching the I think Cybot needs to the... step out of the junkyard if they want to make a final stand here. Jeez, this game hasn't even lasted five minutes. My time has gone off that quickly. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Oh, so Drax has got uh, Juice. I don't think Juice realized Drax was it here. Looks like a friendly strike may have had Drax there. Perhaps. It Perhaps. did. Wow. <laughs> Somebody going for a strike unless the Juice was just predicting it over the, the rock there. But yeah, he's still focusing down Drax. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. Well, uh, aim I mean, for something else like the Warhammer. <laughs> yeah, I guess the Warhammer's got to be CTS, right? No oh, oh, Warhammer's new. There you go. Yeah, yeah, there you go. There he is. <laughs> Warhammer down. First of the weak leagues as well. Yeah, I mean. All over. All over side that is going to be wow, all nice. she wrote. And uh, it's GG's 2 to 8. That will be the final game for, for yeah, this DPS. Isn't, this isn't even 40 minutes. We haven't even gone half an hour. Just over half an hour yet. Holy shit. Well, yeah, that's that a fast game, man. Three minutes, 40. That was Woo. quick and to the point. I mean. <sighs> wow, look yeah, at As much as I was talking smack about the Timberwolf. You know, there you go. 750 uh, damage coming out of that. I mean, several high damages, though. You see Natrid with the Blood Ass with 678. Mm. Cybot putting out 592 in the Death Strike, although, you know, alive for quite a long time. Yep. But, I mean, other than those, Jay-Z putting out 511 in the Stalker, nothing too high. But, I mean, decent damage all around, other than, you know, you can pretty much tell who died early. <laughs> yeah, you can see the early de but, early deaths and the, uh, and the, and the longer-living performers. <laughs> but, the I mean, the biggest ones for me here are... Neither Black Lynn are really doing too much, but I mean, in particular, Good Pants with lowest damage on his team. That mech has so much DPS. Um, I think they just overextended with that. I think he got, uh, he got caught out uh, fairly early and got legged, I think yeah. it was. Yeah. He was in, like, basically the center of the fight. Uh, and maps. the other one is the Dire Wolf, only doing 400 for DPS. Hard to get into position uh, with the Fat Boy, right? Yeah, and How that's the, the thing. With it? I, it's too slow. I, I don't know why DPS push so early when their assaults were not in position they, they, there was no rush is, is the impression i got kind of got a little excited going around the corner he almost would have maybe faked it a little bit you know oh we're coming and back and lift yeah. off a little bit just to scurry pg uh pg uh two to eight just <laughs> <laughs> i don't know why that came out just scurried them around just a little bit you know and that would have been a little uh 
a little more handy. So we've got the map straight up if yeah. you want to do a very quick rundown because yeah. these have been some very quick games. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, so 2 2 took a pretty spread approach off the bat. Uh, I mean, was hopping around cockpits, but they had something more or less, you know, evenly spread around the map like this. Just It looked like a very nice spread, basically. Yeah, they were, yeah. DPS yeah. went very hard down the side, though, in contrast. So they were very bunched up. Something like this, I think. I did the right number I'd, of X's. I'd, I'd say roughly, many. give or take. That's about right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, basically took this block of six mechs and went womp and just went <laughs> straight around the corner. <laughs> and <laughs> Looks like some sort of NFL plan or something that I see on the television. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, then T2 8th, okay, said sure and just came over and then a whole scrap right in here. Yeah. Just Up and Delta dirty. 5. And of course, Delta 5 this, this mech back here. A 100 ton dire wolf that then had to just hoof it over here and just, I mean, only got into the play after that initial skirmish ended. I mean, he Juice in that was only really in the fight once DPS said never mind and backed out of that brawl. And at that point, yeah. they had, I think the Viper was legged up front, their Black Laner was ripped to shreds. And then, I don't know, I even then, I think it was recoverable, but they didn't play enough under their dire wolf. I mean, yeah, they lost the Viper at that point, which sucked, but they had gotten. The death strike beat up, but you saw when two eight pushed, it was just kind of disorganized from from DPS. I mean, they had two mechs in the back killing a death strike that that had dropped down here, and that mech was it was Stony, and that was basically useless. I mean, he was crit CT. He wasn't gonna dare show his face again, and if he did, the the dire wolf for the Mad Cat would have killed him immediately. And that's pretty much so, what happened. He peeked out dead. <laughs> like he yeah. was he was done straight away immediately dead. And and then those two mechs for DPS were then you know out of the fight when when the rest of their their uh, DPS -y mechs were getting killed yeah. over in like Charlie Five Delta Five so you know that combined with the fact that their assaults didn't have Overwatch and I think just better target focus from two two eighth as well I mean you could tell when they wanted to go in on mechs and and DPS are just kind of in and out and it looked like just and when you look at the percentages last. for two two eighth they were all like fifty sixty percent. Seconds. I mean, DP it, mechs it, lasted seconds uh, on the DPS team. They were one call yeah. dead, just se seconds. Bang, bang, dead. Bang, bang, dead. Yeah, and and like I said, they they put out good damage. I mean, like I said, two two eight's percentages were down, but a lot of it was spread out. I mean, when I hopped in cockpits, you got the warhammer that was almost dead CT, almost dead side torso. You have the firestar where both the legs are weak, but the torsos are also beat up. So. And, you know, some of that comes, too, from the mechs they're using. Like, AC2 Direwolf, not really good at converging. You're just going to take what you can get. But, yeah, I, I just, uh, I don't know, I feel like 2 8 had the better coordination on that one. DPS plan could have worked, but just timing was a little off. So Yeah, the Tourmaline one, I think, could have gone a bit better for them, for sure. So yeah, the, oh, definitely. This one, I think, yeah, the AC2 Direwolf and stuff, just out just... Too early, way more of a timing mm -hmm. issue than a than, well, not even a timing, timing end mech, maybe a little bit. But oh, 2 2A came with a plan, as in bring the same mechs as last week, and did pretty well with it. Oh, yeah. Well, well mate, um, that rounds out the cast. So we'll send it back over everyone over to the other channel that's actually still going. Wait, thank you for joining me yes. for a very brief and quick cast. <laughs> yeah, and what was uh, what, what are we heading into on the other side? Uh, I have no idea, it is KDCM and. Uh, CXF, I think, maybe, but I have to check. <laughs> Something we'll find like that. When we, we'll find out when we get there because these matches right. are just so damn fast. So thanks for joining me, mate, and we'll uh, send everybody yeah. over to the next channel. Yeah, GG's. Good one. Thanks, mate.